So now we are going to make it so that only people who create clubs can edit their own clubs. And we're going to make it so that this edit button cannot be seen by people who are not the owner of the club and also make it so that people who are not the owner of the club uh, cannot delete or create events. So first, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our lives easier by adding a POM dependency that's going to give us all types of cool tools so that we can have authentication on our time leaf view. So what you want to do is you want to go type in on Google time leaf extras or go to my GitHub, get this dependency, go ahead, get it, uh, put it into the Palm Excel, hit that refresh button, and we will go ahead and go into our controllers next. So let's go into here. Um, we need our user service. So first thing, um, go into the club controller and we are going to create a user service. So we'll go user service, user service, um, this, we've done this probably like a million times. So this is I had no need to explain it. So let's just go in here. So user service and then go down right here. So we go user service and we go user service. Okay. So that looks good right now. Let's just worry about the list of clubs. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to new up a user entity because if we don't have a user entity, it uh, will, sh it's going to show errors. So we'll go user and user entity. Let me see. Okay, so user entity, just like that. So go ahead, we're gonna new up this object. And then right after the find clubs, what we are going to do is we're going to bring in our security utility. So we'll go user name is equal to security util. And we will call this get session user. After this, we're going to have some logic here. It's going to be a null check. So we will go username is not equal to null. And this is going to, if the user is found, so if we do get a user back, AKA the user is logged in, we're going to find by username. So we will go username. And then after that, what we will do is we'll go model dot add attribute. We will go ahead, we will add user, and then we will add user to that. And we'll go ahead and add use the model attribute one last time right here. So just go down into here, and that looks good. So the next thing is that we actually have to go into the view and create it. And the way that we do that, we're going to go into, we're gonna go into the view, we'll go div, we're gonna say th if, and we are going to check if the user ID and the created by ID are the same. And if you don't know what that is, I'll, sh I'll just show you really quick. We'll go, so we'll say th if, we'll go ahead, bring in the user ID and we will go double equals. Then we are going to check the club. We are going to check the created by and we're going to check the ID. So we'll go, go ahead, fix up this typo and close this out. Go ahead, bring this down right here, bring our closing div down. And just for aesthetic purposes, we'll go ahead, bring that over just like that. And I'm thinking that this is it. So let's go ahead. This will be our first one. That was pretty quick. Let's go into here and let's go ahead and test it. So I'm gonna bring this over right here. Looks like it's already loaded up. We'll load up the club. So let's try it again. Okay, so our club and there we go. Next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead, we need to test the user and we need to sign in with the user that actually created the club to make sure that it actually works. And would you look at that? So if we are logged in, we can see it. And if we are not logged in, we can't see it. And let's go ahead and move on to the next endpoint. This endpoint is going to be almost exactly the same. We can actually copy and paste a lot of code I think it's good to copy and paste code if you know if the situation calls for it and there's actually it's probably a little bit better sometimes because you don't get as tired of coding and you can focus your energy on other things just my opinion okay so we're going to go here then we are going to go past our club dto and we're going to go down here and we are going to do the same exact thing okay so let's go inside of our detail find the delete in the create event and we're going to go here I'm gonna go ahead, copy and paste this. Let's go ahead, close out this div. So we'll go ahead, close this div out. 
And we can go ahead here, move this over, make it look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Let's go ahead and hit that rerun button. And we're going to bring this over. So let's bring this over and let's make sure that works. So we go here, see if we're logged in. So we are logged in. And then we're going to go to our view and we can see it. So let's log out and see if it works. So we'll go here and go to our view. Would you look at that? That is beautiful. So let's go ahead and let's keep moving on. So let's go ahead inside of our events. Now we need to start working on our events and our events are not going to be that much different. So let's go into our event list. I'm going to say user entity and we'll call this user same exact thing. Nothing new. Go into here. We're going to go user entity Go there and we will go below the find all events. And what I am going to do is it's exactly the same. I'm going to take the get the session user and I'm going to get the user and we're going to do a good old copy and paste. <laughs> right below here just to make it look amazing. We could probably turn this into a function, but I don't think that's really necessary. It's not that much code and we're getting near the end here. Let's go ahead up here and we'll go user service and we're gonna go user service, same exact thing. So user service, user service. We'll go down here. So this dot user service is equal to user service and Let's go ahead and run it. This thing, oh, actually can't forget we got, uh, we still have to do the view. So let's go ahead, let's go into our event list view. And the first one that we are going to alt, it's going to be pretty much the same exact thing. So we're gonna go into here, go ahead, copy and paste this. Let's go into our event list. We're going to go, we want the user, people who are not logged in to be able to view but we don't want them to be able to edit unless they own it so we're going to do the same exact thing here and we're going to go slash div okay so let's go ahead rerun it and we're going to go into our events i think we actually need to create an event we don't have any event so what i'm going to do is i am going to go over to here i'm going to make sure that i am logged in it probably logged us out already Probably doesn't hurt to, start to log back in. We're going to go into here. We are going to create an event. We'll go 5 a.m. marathon. We'll go marathon. Just add random stuff to it. Doesn't really matter at this point. So go here. It'll be a marathon that lasts like five days. It's a pretty crazy marathon. And what we want to do, so this looks good, but we need to make sure that it does not have it if we are logged out. So we'll go to find clubs. We'll go to Charlotte Running Club. Go ahead, check out the marathon. And we also need to get the delete. So I did, uh, the actual list is working, but the delete, the actual detail page is not working. So let's go ahead and start working on the detail page. So detail page is not going to be almost any different. So let's go ahead into our event controller and let's start looking at this. So. Let's go ahead here and what we want to do is we want to find the single view event and we're going to go into here. So go ahead, get our user entity, go ahead, paste it there. And then right below the find event, we're going to add the same exact code that we had before. So we're going to go into here, go ahead, copy and paste this. We're going to go into here. And then it's going to be the same. Well, no, this one's actually going to be a little bit different. We also have to add the, uh, we're, we're also going to have to get the club. So we're going to go into here. We're going to go model, we're going to add attribute. We're going to have the club. And then we're going to go into here. We're going to have the event DTO. So we also want to pass in the event DTO. And then what we want to do is we want to go back into the detail page. So we're going to go detail. So let's go here. So events.detail. Let me look into here, see what we got here. Okay, so same exact thing. So we're gonna go into here. Let me see. Let's go into our list. Let's go ahead, copy this right here. Then we're going to go into our events detail. So let's go, let's try and find the delete button. Let's go here. And this is the delete right here. going to go div 
And of course, we are going to close out our div as we always do. Go into here and let's rerun it. Make sure that everything is looking good. Okay, so looks good. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are logged in. Go user, go log in, go to the view. We will go to the actual event. And I forgot one thing. We actually need to go into here and we need to go to the event. So we have an event, we have a club, we have a created by it, and we have an ID. So let's go ahead in here and let's test it out. So got this right here. This is looking good. This is looking good. Next thing that we want to do is we need to make sure that this is not here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna log out, we're going to go to our club. We are going to go to our marathon and our delete button is no longer there until we are logged in. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of all of this up here and we need to make it so that people who are only logged in actually see this welcome button. And this is going to be taken care of pretty much by the Spring Security Time Leaf. And what we are going to do is we're going to go right into our layout and we are going to go to, let's see, we gotta find find events. So let's go find events. And we're actually gonna get rid of this directory because we, we don't need the directory right now. Um, next thing that we need to do is we need to bring in time leaf security. So we're going to go xmls.sec, xmn, xmlns, and then we go up here and we are going to have the timeleaf.org. And this is going to be, let's see, so http slash slash www.timeleaf. So we're going to go timeleaf.org, timeleaf.org just like that. Okay, so that looks good. So let's go back to find events. And what we are going to do is we're gonna go right here and we are going to have here, here, and we are going to add the SEC authorize. Okay, so next thing that we need to do is we need to have a login. So we're going to have the login. You're going to have the register and we're going to change this to the login. This is going to be the register. So we have register right here. Then the next thing that we need to do is we go over here and we do sec dot authorize. So we have authorize, so sec authorize. Then what we do is we have this syntax right here. So we're gonna go uh, not, so this is going to be a bang symbol. Then we're gonna go authenticated. So authenticated, and that looks good. Next thing that we want to do is we're going to take this and we are going to copy and paste it down below, just like this. And we're going to, so we have our register. Then we can go ahead and get rid of all this stuff right here. And if we are logged in, Let's see here. So if we are logged in, what is going to happen? Then we're going to take this right here. And if we are logged in, get rid of the bang symbol right here. And if we are logged in, it is going to show this drop down. And we got rid of that. And if we are logged in, we need to create the running club. Also, can't forget this slash right here because it will error. And that looks pretty much like what we want. Also. If you want to, what you can do is we can also add an image right here. So we can go image, go th source, and this will be slash assets slash. So we'll have assets slash logo. And if you want, I actually have a logo for this. So if you want the logo, you can have it. And what I'm going to do is Go find the logo real quick. So just give me a second. I'm going to find this logo. And what we will do is paste it into our assets. And this is called run group. So I'm going to just give it the run group logo. Also, the logo is going to be in my Facebook group. So if you want the actual logo, go to the Facebook group and download the logo right here. You don't have to join the Facebook group if you want to. You can just download it. It doesn't really matter. But if you want it, it's in there. And it should make everything look a lot better. And I need to go into here and actually fix this. So what I'm gonna do is put the curly braces. You need the dollar sign. So I'm gonna go assets and I'm going to go rungroup.png. So we'll go rungroup.png. 
And the next thing that we are going to do, we're gonna go into here and we're also going to set the width. So we're gonna go width and the width is going to be uh, 150. So let's just say, or we'll say this is 100 and we'll say the height, we'll give the height of um, say 60. So we'll give a height of 60, we'll give it a width of 100 and let's go ahead, let's see what it looks like. It might look bad, but hopefully not. Okay, so looks a little wonky, looks a little small, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set this width to 150 and let's run it again and make sure that looks a lot better. And yeah, that looks great. So we have our login, we have our register. So let's go ahead and log in and make sure that our toolbar up here is working correctly. And look at that, that is looking great. Anyways, that is pretty much it guys. I am totally worn out after that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.